Good morning, Mike and Arlen. Our Philippine journey coming to you from Angeles City, Philippines. Thanks for joining. We really appreciate you stopping by. The Filipina conspiracy, the girlfriend conspiracy, the walking ATM conspiracy, the want a green card only conspiracy. Um, you know what? I am really, really seeing a lot of this popping up in my feed. And I thought maybe I would address that because I, I don't think it's a valid argument, to be honest with you. Um, but you know what? Your comments will let us know. But let's talk about it. I never got it what you had to go I guess this world's too slow for you I think there's beauty in the gray The cold, but you just want the gold And there's no way I can beat it Cause I got no chance, no chance When it comes to her She got the glitter and the fame And I, I just wasn't enough Okay, this is not generally what we talk about. I imagine I'll get a ration of shit from a lot of people on this, and that's fine. doesn't really bother me. But we're going to talk about what we see. We're going to talk about what we experience here in the Philippines and in the U.S., what we experienced there. Then we're going to talk about something that we never, ever really talk about. And that's how Arlen and I handle our finances. So, let's start off with the conspiracy issues first. It seems like everybody and their brother has a story to tell about how they wasted money, or how they were taken, or this or that. Now, let's exclude all the idiots that sent money on a long-distance relationship to someone that they knew for less than 90 days, okay? And when I say less than 90 days and knew them, I mean they personally met them and have spent less than 90 days with them. Those guys, I'm sorry... You get whatever it is you're foolish enough to do, or what you risk to do. I don't even want to use the words foolish. I just want to use risk. But let's talk about the other side of the equation. All right? And that is, is that every Filipino wants in your wallet. Nah, I don't think so. What every Filipino wants is to lift their economic being. If it's through your wallet, that's fine. That's part of it, isn't it? Isn't that what you would expect? All right. They want to lift the economic and life of their family. All right. That's a, a traditional thing here, helping to support family. Okay. Let's think about that for a second. Isn't that the same as in America? Now, I, I don't know about the UK. I don't know about Australia, but I don't think it's different. I don't think that any woman wants to not lift up her future and to not help her family. Um, I'm sure there are some that don't get along with their family, and maybe that's the case, but in general... Um, I, I don't see that as being any different. Uh, I think that what it starts out with is, is that many of you that are watching this have been in failed relationships, whether they were marriages, whether living partners, um, and I'm talking about prior to the Philippines. Well, finances were a part of that as well. And men will complain incessantly about how the system is rigged against them. And in, in truth, it certainly can be, all right, in America. In America, between child support, between alimony, 
and between the courts, you can have a difficult time. I, I learned this in my first marriage. Uh, thank God that was not a horrible experience. But I learned after that that my fan finances are only as strong as my prenuptial agreement. However, most of you don't ever get prenups, and most of you have never had prenups. That's up to you, all right? I understand. A lot of people get involved in a relationship when they're young. They have nothing, and they see they have nothing to lose. The other argument behind that is, is I know this woman. I trust her. She would never do that to me. And they don't get them. Not going to go into the pros and cons on that either. We all know, since I have prenups, we all know exactly how I feel about that. Now, I don't think that Filipino women are any different than American women when it comes to that. What I do think is there are men who just simply are weak. Just weak. All right? If you're the king of your castle, you control it. All right? And we're going to go into this in a few minutes about how our finances work. Not about how much or anything like that, but how they work. And then you can just make your own judgment calls and do whatever you want. But the bottom line is, is you need to control every aspect of it until that point in time where you don't. How do you decide that? That's a tough one. That's a real tough one. I don't think it ever comes to that. I don't think the day comes that you don't check on your finances on a daily basis. Every morning when I wake up, my routine is very simple. First, the YouTube comments. Second, my email. Third, my finances. I check my brokerage. I check my other brokerage. I check our banking accounts. And I check our credit cards in the U.S. And then I check the Philippine stuff as well. Keep track of all of it. Okay? Isn't that what a responsible, astute individual does? Now, many of you will not have this issue. Yours will not be complicated. You can check your stuff in five minutes. Great. More power to you. I wish I could do mine in five minutes. It takes me about 35, 40 minutes to go through everything, jot a couple notes down for things that need to be done, and then move on. So with Arlen and I, so many of you may not know this, but Arlen and I met in the Philippines. All right, Arlen had a job, Arlen was employed, the whole nine yards. We got married in the Philippines. <clears throat> Arlen applied for her green card, got a, her spousal visa. It took about like 18 months or something like that. It was a bitch. Um, and then came to the U.S. And it was a big culture shock for her, uh, obviously. But one of the biggest culture shocks for Arlen was becoming involved in finances. Understanding it costs money to live. We spend money very differently than traditional Filipinas do. All right? And you have to teach them that. You have to get them to understand it. And then you have to teach them the responsibility of it. Either way doesn't matter. Some you don't, obviously. Some you do. Some you'll be successful with. My point with that is, is that if you are selecting women that want to control your money, you're going to find out very quickly. And when you do, it's time to cut them loose. You need to be the king of your castle, period. It just doesn't end there, all right? Um, you know, decision-making, all of the things that go along with that. You need to be the guiding voice and the understanding part. 
Now, I don't mean treat them subhuman. I don't mean treat them as property. But what I do mean is, is you worked hard for your money. You worked really, really hard to get to where you're at. It doesn't matter whether you worked hard to get a very small pension or to get a large pension. It doesn't matter. You worked hard. So, how do we do it? It's really simple. Okay? Arlen has access to most of the bank accounts. She does not have access to my brokerage accounts. All right? Although she and my daughter are the beneficiaries on them. Okay? I think I'm worth far more dead than I am alive. That's for sure. Let's not emphasize that to her or my daughter. All right? Um, she has access to our U.S. banking account, which she has no reason to go in it other than the fact that when I die, that's where that brokerage money is going to end up going to be delivered to her. She has access to our Philippine banking accounts. And quite frankly, she pretty much runs those. I see every dime she spends. Uh, whatever money I give to her as cash on hand is cash on hand. You know, Arlen has credit cards and she has debit cards. I bet she hasn't used her credit card but once or twice in the past three years. And I knew in advance that she was going to use it for that particular purchase. Because we do that, we, we actually make sure she uses her credit cards a couple of times a year to keep them current and active. Otherwise, they get turned down. Number two, I know when she goes into the debit cards. And that's the way it works. You need to put that at that top. I don't want to, this conspiracy about they're going to steal from you. They're only going to steal from you if you let them. I have heard so many bloggers. Oh, they have secret money. They don't tell you this. They don't tell you that. You know what? The only secret money Arlen has is when I give her money and she doesn't give me the change. Okay, fine. Big deal. I expect that. I know exactly how much she spends on her family. We agree and we talk about it. All of the things. If you can't develop that kind of relationship with the Filipina that you're going to be involved in, then it's the wrong Filipina, number one. Number two, if you, if you are letting them rule your finances and they're not living with you for at least a year, and if they don't understand it and understand how it works, then you're just in the wrong position. Now, I'd love to know your thoughts about this. I really and truly would. I know that there's a lot of people that have had bad things happen, no doubt about it. Um, but some of those were bad choices that they made, all right? Um, you can't, you can't, you have to be man enough to accept the mistakes that you've made, fix it, and go on. Um, don't dwell on it. Fix it. You know what? When I transitioned from clinical medicine into business medicine, all right, when I transitioned, we, uh, we quickly, I, I quickly learned paralysis by analysis. Companies and individuals suffer from the same thing. When you overanalyze stuff, it slows you down. You don't make the decisions. You say, oh, I should wait and do this. Oh, I should wait. That's paralysis by analysis. Don't be that way. Control it. You're the king. You're the king of your castle. All right? Watch that. Control that. Be aware of that. Develop the communication skills between yourself financially and your partner. But don't tell me that every Filipino woman out there is after your wallet. That's bullshit, in my opinion. What they're after is, is life, 
all right? They're lifting up their life. That's what they're after. And they're going to take as much as you give, just like in the U.S. No different than women in the U.S. I, you can't argue that women in the U.S. aren't the same way. That's just the way I, I see it. Look, if you found this informative, great. If you found it engaging, even better. We hope you'll subscribe. We hope you'll hit that thumbs up. Otherwise, we really do appreciate your time, and we hope you have a great day.